I could be the woman that you want, but it's still not enough for a man that's not ready. So then that would initially be a bad experience for me. So then say if I'd done that and I'd gone off into the world and done that with 10 other men, 10 more men on body count that is an issue for you, men, so then it's like, where do we stand as women? Because there's a lot of good women that have the same morals and ethics that I have that are going into the world and it's like, if a man's not ready, he won't wife you. What does that have to do with misogyny? If I'd done that with like 20, 30 men, you'd be quick to say, your body counts too much. And then it starts to have this battle with the sexes with a double standard and the behavior and the way men disrespect women for wanting to be as liberated as a man, sexually. So you want to have as much sex as a guy? No, but I'm saying, like, whether I did or whether I didn't, because of the way the world is and the way it views things, how do we ha keep it fair then? You well, know? double standards exist for a reason. It doesn't have to be oppression. If this was an actual restaurant in this scenario, I'd be paying. Regardless, like no matter what, no matter how the date went, even if you stormed off, even if you thought it was a misogynist, whatever, I'm still paying. Welcome, friends. This is T again with another reaction video. And today we're going to be doing a reaction on grilling with Nico. And he's going to be going against Cheyenne, the Cheyenne Reynolds, that's her name. Now, this is the second time I hit to film this video. <laughs> it's very funny, right? This is the first time I ever hit to do anything like this. I put out a video, thought everything was cool and copacetic. All of a sudden, I'm reading my comments, I'm responding to my comments like I always do. And then the guy was like, why you put out a video on Sneeko and I can't hear anything? What the F? And I thought this person was just trying to be funny because I, I thought I scanned through this thing because I had to edit all this stuff. So I thought everything was fine. So I was like, sorry, you know, technical difficulty. At first, I thought it was somebody just trolling me, trying to mess with me a little bit, right? But, you know, I'm still respectful. And I was like, I'm sorry, I apologize, which I'm glad that's what I said. So I go back just to check, and he was right. I screwed up. I apologize. I'm sorry that if you came on my channel and tried to watch that video and it was complete silence, my bag. I screwed up. So because I wanted to make it up to all of you, I decided to go over it again. Now, I watched this before, even before I did the first one. Because I don't like these things. I like to know the points I wanted to make with this. It's not like my regular reactions, like when I never heard something before, like my music reactions. I usually will watch a lot of these things. Once in a while, I might be surprised by it. You know, because I don't want to watch the whole thing. I just want to just do the reaction. But this I watched beforehand, before I even did the first one. So, it's like... I already know the deal, okay? So I decided to go ahead and film this again for all of you because I thought it was very interesting and I made some good points. So hopefully this time around is better than the first time. In some kind of ways, even though it took up some of my time, I wanted to do something else. In some kind of ways, I'm glad I did it again because I think I made points on this one that I didn't make on the first one which I'm very happy and satisfied with, okay? So I hope you enjoy it. So let's go ahead and get into this reaction. But before we do, please like, subscribe, and share this video. And don't forget to hit that notification bell. That way you know whenever we come out with new videos, all right? Okay, let's get with this. I'm Sneeko, and I'm here to find love. I don't think I'm gonna find it, but it's gonna be a good way for me to exercise my charm and my bobbing and weaving skills on a date. I really like Sneeko, man. He's he's really cool. I mean, you know, he's very smooth, he's likable. He camera loves him, man. I mean, he just he just he's fantastic. I really, really like this guy. So it's gonna be very interesting for him to to be debating with Shy Cheyenne Reynolds, I believe that's her name. So it's going to be very interesting to see that dynamic. So I'm really looking forward to that. We'll see how it goes and see if I'm really misogynistic. This is why I'm on Rumble because what I Yes, you are misogynistic. Say is not safe enough for you two, but I think I can manage her grilling. I deal with a lot more haram every single day on a panel of 10 haram women. This is nothing. This is, I'm trained. I'm ready to go. She can ask me whatever she likes. I'm an open book. I'm one of the most honest people I know. So honest, I think that's why they had to ban me on YouTube. Sniper out now on all platforms. <laughs> that is one 
hell of a woman right there. I'm not even going to lie, man. I don't care how she thinks. I don't care, you know, if she's a feminist or whatever the situation is. That is a beautiful woman right there, most definitely. And it's going to be very interesting to see both of them go at it. Now, Sneeko is a different type of animal. I think she used her looks and charms to sway most men. Guys really aren't going to push back because of the way she looks. But like I say, Snickles a completely different kind of guy. I think he's going to push back. How hard he pushed back, that's another question. But I believe he will push back. So it's going to definitely make this a very interesting debate. I'm really looking forward to it. Good morning. Hello, how are you? I'm great. Nice uh, to can meet you. Give me a hug. Great to meet you. You know he had to get that hug. And you saw the way she hugged them too, man. It's one of those type of hugs where the girls got their butt out and stuff like that. Or they almost act like they don't want to hug you. Because a woman who likes you, she's going to like really embrace. But I don't blame her. I don't hold that against her. She don't know this guy. So I don't expect her to give him one of them deep hugs. That was just making a point on how it looks. But that's a beautiful woman there. You. Nice you look great. You. I wasn't knowing what to expect. Thank you. You look nice yourself. Thanks. I put on a, a good shirt. Yeah, it's a very nice shirt. Always oh, handsome. And he looks nice. Nope. My apologies for being late. It's okay. Better late than never. Essex is a bit far. I did not think we were going to come all the way here. I was in London. Oh, really? Yeah. But it's good to be back. I haven't seen grilling in a long time. Yes. Well, we're back. We're back. So, Cheyenne. Nice to meet you. Sneeko. Nice to meet you, Sneeko. I actually think she looks really good. I like her hair, her outfit. So, Sneeko, tell me about you. yourself. What do you want to know? Um, let's start with your hobbies and interests. Hobbies and interests. I'm working all the time recently, so there's not a lot of time to do anything extracurricular. I consider this fun. I enjoy yeah. talking to... Dating? Well, I enjoy talking to beautiful women, but it's still work at the same time. Oh, okay. I I noticed with the red pill, the manosphere, they're always working, constantly. Because they do push a man should be on his purpose at all times and very protective of the things that he, what's the word, the things that he produces and things that he accumulates. He should always be protective and always be on guard. So even when you're dealing with a beautiful woman, you can pretty much make this kind of content or you can, at the least you can make it experience. So I really get where they're coming from with that. I'm always working. Always working. Always, yeah. No sleep. So where's your accent from? I grew up, uh, I was born in New York City. So what's New York like compared to London? It's very similar. It's, oh, it? it's kind of identical in a lot of ways. It's getting infected by wokeness quite a bit. And he already went there. <laughs> he already went there talking about wokeness. That's very interesting. He did not waste any time. I think he just want to go ahead and get into it. He, he seemed like kind of got the door to really waste his time. He, he already knows. He probably, I'm sure he watched enough of the stuff she did, especially since she had My Rent and Fresh on her show. So he really want to get into it because he probably already, you know, looked at her. And you know how you, like, look somebody up and down and you already realize what kind of person they are. So I'm sure that he already kind of figured out where she's coming from. So this is definitely going to be good. Infected by wokeness. It's getting infected. What do you mean? I think I'm woke. Do you? Yeah, I think I'm woke. I'm conscious. Big red flag. Uh, <laughs> giant, giant red flag. I'm not really sure what she means by that word. People always use that word in different scenarios, but that's, uh, I kind of want to leave. What is wokeness to you? <laughs> wokeness is using weakness as a virtue. It's finding power and being a victim. God, he's opinionated. It's just virtue signaling. So blaming things about for racism, blaming everything on sexism, on misogyny, on other circumstances. People like to latch on to identity politics to give them justification for where they are in life. Oh, it's gonna be a long day. I really love that explanation. That's, you know, that's probably the, the best explanation anybody gave when it comes down to being woke. I really love that explanation. Being a victim all the time, you know, always complaining about things. So that's kind of like now she got to approach the situation in a different way. She probably was her main thing was to like complain and put it off on men and all these crazy things. But now she really got to get into it in a different angle. 
So he's already setting up the premise, and which I really like. Sneeko ain't no joke, man. You got to give it to him. But I'm sure she got a lot up her sleeve, though. I'm sure she does. So let's go ahead and get into it. Or make climate change their personality because they need to feel like they're oppressed. It's, it's everybody wanting to think that the system is against them when the system is actually giving us these ideas to just keep us distracted and keep us fearful and always yelling about nothing. Mm. That's London, that's New York. But at the same time, like, everyone has a different reality. My experience as a woman is very different to yours as a man. So of course I might call it misogynistic and sexist. But latching onto that and blaming the world for being misogynistic will hold you back more than however misogynistic the world actually is. If you believe these ideas, your thoughts and beliefs, they end up emulating and creating your reality. Yeah, you manifest it, right? So if you walk into a room and you sit down here thinking that I'm misogynistic or that the world is oppressing you, what's gonna happen is you're gonna see more of it and you're gonna be thinking that and the world's gonna respond to that. I don't have a victim mentality, but it's really hard to not let things burn you a little. Like what? Experience. Yeah, but when you when you start making decisions based off of that, that's when it becomes a problem. Everybody have issues. Everybody have problems. It's not just men. It's not just women. We all going through a lot of crazy stuff, especially nowadays. But the thing is, what he's talking about is women tend to approach the world in a victim mindset, and that's an issue, an issue that they should be aware of. And I think the manosphere and the red pill. That's their mission, not only to help men, but also help women like her to understand that's what the world is trying to make her a victim. And she should really think for herself and actually go by the experiences she had with men without any prejudices. Like he said, as soon as he walked in, she probably already had an idea of who he was and what he was about instead of just actually getting to know him. You know, she already said he's opinionated, but ain't that the point? She want a man that thinks. She don't want a dumb man. I mean, why would she want that? She want a man that knows what he wants, understand the world, know how to move in it. So that's the kind of man she should be shooting for. But instead, she is almost as, as if she want him not to be opinionated, just follow her lead. And that's usually what destroys relationships. And that's why a lot of women like her find it difficult to get married. For example, even dating, right? I, I consider myself a very nice, homely girl. I would go on a date, but and it's like I could be the woman that you want, but it's still not enough for a man that's not ready. So then that would initially be a bad experience for me. So then say if I'd done that, and I'd gone off into the world, and then that with 10 other men, 10 more men on body count that is an issue for you, men, so then it's like, where do we stand as women? Because there's a lot of good women that have the same morals and ethics that I have that are going into the world, and it's like, if a man's not ready, he won't wife you. What does that have to do with massage? Okay, I just want to say something about that. Look, that's the point of you getting to know each other. If, you're like, if you feel like he's not ready, then you should just make it a one-date situation and then keep it moving. Find the man you want. And that's the problem with a lot of women these days, especially modern women. They don't do that. They be attracted to a man, they like the way that he's smooth and everything else to go along with that, and then they pursue it. And a lot of them get pregnant or a lot of them get into relationships that deep down inside they really don't want, but they stick with it because they attracted to this dude. And these guys, they know aren't ready. So they feel like, well, I'm beautiful enough, I can probably convince him to marry me at some point. Instead of actually looking for a man that's ready to get married, and that's the issue. So she's talking about all these men aren't ready, but then why are you pursuing these men? That's the problem. These guys, they already know what they want, and a lot of times it's sex. If they if they look like Sneeko and they got a lot going for him, I believe he is a, he's a millionaire now. So he most likely just looking for just companionship, you know, sex and things like that. He's not, he's not trying to get into any deep relationships, especially with a modern woman. So that's, going, that's what makes it difficult for her because he already pinpointed how she is. She didn't even have to tell him that she was woke because he already knew it. He probably watched the debate between her and Myron and everybody else. So she, she are, her, her jig is up, basically. So he already knows the deal. But see, these women want to come into these situations hoping that these men don't know. And that's the problem. More more men know what to expect from a lot of these modern women now. And that's the issue. If I'd done that with like 20, 30 men, you'd be quick to say, 
your body counts too much. And then it starts to have this battle with the sexes with the double standard and the behaviour and the way men disrespect women for wanting to be as liberated as a man, sexually. So you want to have as much sex as a guy? No, but I'm saying, like, whether I did or whether I didn't, because of the way the world... Oh, that's basically what you're saying, whether you did or whether you didn't. That means you should have the right to have sex with as many men as possible and yet still get a ring. Now, you do have the right to have sex with as many men as you want, but it's not guaranteed you're going to get that ring, especially if he knows that you've been having a lot of sex. And her argument basically is about men and women being equal in all aspects. But that's not the case. Men still going to have to you know, pay for things and take care of you. Our trade-off is we are able to have a lot of sex without a stigma. Your thing is you don't have to pay for everything all the time. Men are opening doors for you, paying for everything for you. And yet your stigma is if you sleep with a bunch of dudes, that's going to be a problem, especially if he knows about it. So that's where she has the issue with. And I see a lot of women have that issue. They feel like they can do what the man does, but at the same time reap the benefits of being a woman. And her argument is flawed. is and the way it views things how do we ha keep it fair then you well know? double standards exist for a reason it doesn't have to be oppression if this was an actual restaurant in this scenario i'd be paying regardless like no matter what no matter how the date went even if he stormed off even if he thought it was a misogynist whatever i'm still paying okay. and i'm not going to complain about that double standard that's just they exist for a reason we have different roles that we're supposed to play double standards exist for a reason it has a negative connotation because of female ego but just get over it we have different I agree with him completely. Now, like I love that example when you're talking about in the restaurant. If, you know, whatever the situation is, the man has to pay and the women expect it. So women expect these benefits, but yet they hate the fact that men have benefits of being able to sleep with a bunch of women. Now, if you know a woman that wants to be sleeping around with a bunch of dudes, that ain't the woman for you, especially if you're trying to find, be married. Now, if you're just dating, and I dated girls I knew slept around or been with, been with men, but I wasn't trying to put a ring on it. So that made a lot of sense for me. So I just wanted the pleasure. I didn't care about no long-term anything. And a lot of these women, they expect you. Now, they, they're okay with you sleeping with them, but then they expect you also at some point put a ring on it. You accepted me. You knew that I've been sleeping around with a bunch of dudes and we had this kind of relationship for at least six months to a year. But now I'm waiting for you to put a ring on it. And he like, negative. That's not going to happen. I walked in knowing you've been with all these dudes, but you also accepted me knowing that I do and that I wasn't going to take you seriously. And, I'm, and our whole relationship is sex. All of a sudden, now you talking about changing it up? Most men, like, especially like Sneeko, aren't going to go for that. They're not going to put a ring on it. And if Cheyenne is the type of woman that wants to sleep around, she's going she gonna to find it very difficult to find herself a man. A man to take her seriously, that is. Because I'm sure she can, you know, hook up with a dude as beautiful as she is. But that's usually not a woman's problem. Roles, and it's extremely important that we play those roles. This is what I'm supposed to do. Yeah. A woman should keep her body count as low as possible. Really? What is it with men and wanting like a woman that is basically a virgin? So, what's your body count? Sniper out now on all platforms. <laughs> what's yours? No, we're not doing that. Okay. Should a man pay the bill? I've paid the bill. Like, I don't mind paying a bill, if that makes sense. I don't mind splitting it. But I think it's nice. I do like traditional values in that aspect where if a man is a protector and a provider, then look after me, you know, then pay the bill. But at the same time, she want to be able to sleep around too. And after that, you marry her. You know, see, that's where the double standard is coming from. A man wanted the way he always had it. He always, in some ways, been traditional. Yes, men sleep around, but when it comes to marriage, we take marriage seriously. That don't change. We look at marriage in a certain way. She stay faithful, he takes care of her. Keep her safe. Watch out for her. Give her children. All these things come with what a man feel like he's supposed to do. But the problem is women don't want to stay traditional themselves. They want to be able to do whatever they want because they do believe in feminism. She just definitely won. That's probably the reason why she's not married. I'm assuming she's probably 27, between a late 20s or early 30s or something like that. That's what she looks. She don't look like 
that, you know, she's old, but yet she don't look young either. She looks mature, and she's at a point where I believe that she knows better. But she wants to do her thing, even at this age. I'm sure she was running around when she was young. Guys were probably flying her all over the place. You know, she was getting all the guys she wanted, but none of them locked her down. But that's probably not their doing. It's probably hers. She probably just wanted to keep playing and keep receiving all these goodies. And she was having too much fun to even think about getting married. And yet, I guess this argument she's making because she she fits into this argument. This is probably about her. Because what I noticed when women get into these particular arguments or discussions, they always like to talk about themselves. You know, they can't separate and just talk about the subject. They always got to refer it back to them. And that's what I've noticed in a lot of these podcast debates. And he understand it, too, because he had enough arguments. Him and Destiny are very good at arguments with people. So they that's why I think they're friends, because they're able to get along and debate and still remain friends at the same time. But, yes, he understands all these arguments she's about to bring. So hopefully it'll still be interesting. But I think it's unfair to expect men to pay the bill. So what expectations do you have of men? I, don't, I have really low expectations now. I'll be honest, it's doing this show. It's changed your expectations of yeah, men? Yeah, so they're very little now. Can they, do they have to make more than you? Do they have to be taller yeah, than you? Yeah, to be fair, you don't have to make... In an idle situation, I would love for a man to earn more money than me, be a protector, be a provider, but unfortunately, with the way a lot of people see the world and society sees the world with the men that are the high earners, they can't fit what I want from what, what do you want? I well, this is interesting, too. But I noticed something about this show, too, as well. It's easy for her to have a bunch of guys on this show who agree with her. They agree with everything that come out of her mouth. One, that doesn't make a show. It doesn't make a show interesting. And two, she really don't want that. It's good to sit around guys like that as friends or maybe, you know, somebody that's, that like the same sex, if you know what I'm saying. Easy to sit around somebody like that and have these talks and they completely agree with you. But when it comes down to relationships, you don't really want a man like that. Or you would have been married a long time ago. There's a ton of guys out there and podcasts out there talking about they, you know, women are this, that, putting them on a pedestal and agree with everything that come out of their mouth. We love feminism and everything else that goes along with that. But yet at the same time, they don't hook up with these dudes because they know these guys are full of crap. And they know that long term, they, they're not going to be happy. So they will want a man at some level to push back at them. And like I said, that makes a show too as well. So it might not be completely in her hands. Because if she controlled the whole show, it'd probably be a bunch of guys, you know, sitting across from her that agree with everything she does and the show will go down the toilet. The whole point of this show is to get a bunch of guys who stand up for themselves. And that makes it great. And that makes it interesting. And that's the reason why I like grilling. Also, I like looking at her, too, man. She's gorgeous. Look at her, man. My goodness. That is a beautiful woman, man. I, I can't stress that. You know, she is very, very attractive. I, I don't really comes, know. So when it comes to, like, the provider, protector, you don't need to be a millionaire. I just want someone that can come home, look after his kids, kiss his wife, and give me love, and then, play, like, play with the kids on the weekend and just have a nice life. But in reality, men that want to provide for you are the people that are out working, that go away on work trips, that have side women and all that, and I don't want that. I don't... Look, men still do that. Even guys that are not in the home, these baby daddies or whatever the situation is, they still do that. They still are involved with their children when the lady let him. These guys are still out there. Even the average guys that marry you will do this. They will look after their kids. They will play with their kids, take them fishing, take them to baseball games and everything else. The problem is, you know, what an average guy. You want to find a rich dude to do the same common stuff that regular guys do, and that's not the case. Rich guys work constantly. They're always out. They are enticed by other women because other women want them just like you do. So she wants to be able to find a rich dude and control him to do everything that she wants. That's the issue. Because she can find all these things she wants in a regular guy, but she don't want a regular guy. She wants somebody with money, and she wants them to be able to take care of her. She conflate with the fact that during the time she was young, that these dudes were, you know, flowering her with all kind of gifts and taking her on trips and all that kind of stuff inflated that with this, the fact that they wanted to marry her. 
but that wasn't the case. And it might have been a situation where one of these dudes might have wanted to have something more serious with her, but she let that go. Because I bet you a million dollars was really on her. She probably didn't want to give up the lifestyle that she had, so she kept doing it. So the issue is she don't want a regular guy because a regular guy would give her all these things. They will love her, be faithful. They will take care of the kids, play with the kids, probably clean up the house too and do all these things. But she don't want that. She want a rich man to do this. And that's unrealistic. It's unrealistic. No rich guy is going to do that. None that I've heard of. I think she knows what she wants. What she needs is a man to say, no, this is how it's going to be. But to find that guy who will do that for her is going to be difficult. Maybe you want that guy, you just don't want to know about the extracurricular activities. No, but it's not, not knowing. I just want someone that's going to be about me. I, it's just not a nice thought. Because it's like... So don't think got, about it. What do you mean, don't think about it? <laughs> no, it's not don't think about it. If you've got my mind, my body, my heart and my soul, like, why should you then just, like, disregard and be out here in the club with other women? I'm look, look, I'm going to tell you right now. Let's, let's step this back a little bit. Just a little bit right there. Look at that, man. No man would, I mean, in her right mind, that is, would let that go. If we're just talking about looks, they would not let that go. I don't care how many other women they sleep with. They can want to keep that. Saying that if she was the traditional, she's not. She's a modern woman, obviously. So he might want something else just for the mere fact she's getting on his nerves. But let's just pretend that she was traditional. No man would let that go. I don't care whoever else he sleeps with. He won't let that go. And she understand that because she, I'm sure she knows she's beautiful. She definitely knows this. But she think her beauty is going to make a, a man, especially the kind of man she wants, completely loyal to her in all kind of ways and just do whatever she wants. All Put her in the middle. And that's the problem with putting women in the center of your universe. Because that would get boring to her. She would not like that. Women do not like to be put on a pedestal because it's boring and then they have to look down on you while they standing on that pedestal. And they don't want to look down. They want to look up at a man. And everything she says she wants will destroy the relationship because she won't respect that man that she's trying to, to construct. It just won't work. But she don't know that. But Snickle is trying to explain that to her. Honestly, all this show does is make me have very low expectations on men. People always find out, and that's not nice. So it's like, you can be very powerful. Then don't actively seek it out. But it just happens, and this is the thing. Women come to women as a, wom as a woman. I'm coming to you as a woman. Is this your man? Ignore them. Those are always jealous ho Those are always the girls that are like just trying to, they're jealous that you have a good relationship with the man that you're happy with. You can't listen to other women because they don't give good advice to each other. A lot of women are extremely miserable and misery loves company. They don't want to see you succeed because women get extremely jealous when they see a woman get married. So they're going to want to bring you to the club and do the same garbage they're doing. Girls that go and like, as a woman, it's never a happy woman. Because she's hurt. She's also hurt because she was sold dreams by men that wanted to have their cake and eat it. Oh, yep, except a man that cheats on you, basically. That's not what men are going to say to other men. Men are going to tell each other how to have a happy relationship and how to act properly. And when, no, nobody expect you. See, that's the, that's the misconception. Nobody expect you to accept it. Just understand it's going to happen. If he's the kind of guy you know most women want, and he's like a really hard worker, and he's going on business trips, and he's meeting a lot of people, and some of those people are women because women are in the workforce. Back in the day, it might not have been a big deal. The most a man like that could get is a secretary. But now, in all aspects, everywhere a man goes, there are women in their spaces. So it's very difficult for a man that's good looking, that got a lot of money, got a great attitude, that's stoic. It's hard for a man like that to avoid these women because they're everywhere. Society makes sure that everywhere successful men are, there are women. They make sure that. So it's even harder than from back then that they now got to be around these women constantly. And that's what these women are hating. For the mere fact, they know as soon as he walk out that door, every, everywhere he goes is going to be a beautiful woman somewhere. It used to be just on the street or in clubs or whatever. But now it's going to be at the workplace. Now it's going to be where he's doing business. It's going to be pretty much everywhere. Because women are all up in our spaces. 
they want us to stay out of their spaces, but they're all up in our spaces, mostly successful men. And that's the problem she has. She don't trust these guys because everywhere these guys go, because they travel, they, they everywhere, they're in businesses. And they know women make it a point to be there because she does. And that's the problem. And that's why she she feeling so low because she know it doesn't matter what she does or how she looks. She can't avoid that. It's going to happen. And you don't have to be happy about it. You don't. She don't have to be happy about it. But she can't do anything about it. And to have that lack of control of the man she given everything to is a problem for her. All Sneeko and the Manosphere is trying to tell her is it's going to happen. It's unavoidable. Why make yourself miserable? over it if this is the kind of guy you want it's going to be very difficult to live that lifestyle and still constantly not only worried about him but checking his phone following him having people watch him things like that it's, it's just not going to work you're going to destroy your marriage before you know it and before and usually women are the ones that destroy marriages what did they say with seven seventy something percent eighty something percent women file for divorces now and it's probably a lot, have, I know people say it's got a lot to do with money or feminism, but it probably have a lot to do with jealousy. Because they get with like football players and, and basketball players and businessmen, guys that have a lot of money. And they know these guys are doing it. What's they, they say Bill Gates was out there doing this thing. That's probably why she divorced him. She probably would have stayed with his tail, but he was like out there just doing his business. But these women should expect that from these guys. Jeff Bezos, Elon Musk. How many women Elon Musk got? They just don't understand, which is crazy, you know? But it is what it is. Women are just going to tell each other, yeah, well, yeah, but women are just going to tell each other, leave him. He's, a, he's doing this. Look through his phone. Why shouldn't women be allowed or want to have a man that's just loyal to them? You know? Loyalty doesn't have to be sex for men. It's not. Here we go again, another misogynist. It's your body, like why can't it matter to you as a man? But you can't apply the way you view sex to the way men view sex, because we will never see it the same way. We don't see it as like we're losing our purity. Our purity is not attached to sex the same way a woman's is. Yeah, but that's because men put the purity on us as women, so I feel like men give us this pressure. Do we give? No, it doesn't, because women do it too. Women are ready, ready to call you a hoe in a heartbeat. As soon as they know it, especially in competition, if they see a guy they want and they know you want him too, and they know you was out there on the streets, she will tell that man, you really interested in that hoe? She was, she slept with John, Jerry, Kurt, Billy, everybody. She'll just put a list of names because women can't keep their mouth shut. When they out there doing dirt, a lot of times they tell their friends, not knowing their friends are also in competition with them as well over, over the best man they can get. Because friendship is out the window when it comes down to the best man out there. Women will throw their friends under a bus in a heartbeat. And they understand that, and she knows. And I think he's about to get on her about this, but that's the situation. I think women put attachment on that purity just as much as men do. What's the first thing a woman says to insult another woman? Yeah, no. You, you, because deep down we all know that that's how a woman's value is measured. It's just exhausting trying to find the balance. Now, what makes a good woman? A good woman is, provides a spiritual balance. I'm a very busy guy. I have a flight later on. I have a lot of businesses. I have a lot of people attacking. And I have some enemies, stuff like that. And so there's a lot of pressure. Enemies? I need a woman that could provide that balance and just that she can pray for me, that loves me. See, that's the thing. Women don't understand. When you are successful, you make a lot of enemies. Because the, the system and everything else is pushing at you to remain poor and unsuccessful. It's almost like the system goes out of its way to make sure that you have nothing. And you really have to be an extraordinary person to be able to push against that. Now, the system mostly support women because they feel like they're low on the totem pole. So they do everything they can to bring women up. But it's the opposite for men. It's like they, they try to keep men out. And men had to fight against this particular system to get up. And a man that reached the top, a woman knows there's something extraordinary about this man. And they want that man attached to their lives. A man that fails don't have a chance. I mean, if he's good looking and stuff, he can, you know, he'll get sex. 
But a woman don't want to really marry a man like that. They really want a man to be successful because they know how difficult it is for a man to do that. Women, like they say, they're born with a value. They can pretty much, if they're good looking like her or whatever, she, she got this job because she's beautiful. I'm sure she could do the job. I don't want to take that away from her. But if she looked like, you know, an unattractive woman, she wouldn't be up here. She knows it. The producers knows it. Sneeko knows it. Everybody knows it. If it weren't for her look, she wouldn't be here. Sneeko can't afford that. He has to actually build himself to be in the same room as her. He has to be successful because they would have never invited Sneeko if he weren't successful. If he didn't have clout, he would have never got invited to the table, literally. She walked in. They saw her. They probably said a few things to her during the interview. Said, you're hired. You got the look. You got the talent. We want you here. She probably didn't accomplish anything in her life. Because I never heard her other than grilling. Sneeko been at this for years. Pushback, cancellation. People are hating them, arguing with them. Women pushing back, arguing with him. He going on podcast after podcast, trying to make people hear his voice to finally get to where he is right there on grilling. And she don't appreciate that. She don't appreciate that at all. And that's the problem. That's what she don't see. And is happy and is around and, and she presents herself well. It's not that complicated. It's not that hard to please a man. Cook. Clean, smile, happy relationship is that simple. I feel men don't validate women's emotions enough because it's like, listen, I can do all that for you. I can bring you peace, I can pray for you, I can make you have a really great, comfortable life. But if you're not giving me peace because I'm unsettled because you're out, you're here. Why is that party. bringing you, why is that unsettling you? Why is he playing dumb for? Because you should, like, where if you're off out all the time, like, where are you providing for Not me? all the time. No, but I'm saying, but if you are on business and you've got a hectic life, there's no peace for me. I'm just at home, you know, because if you're not there, there's not that emotional need. Because women, we're emotional. We need that. So how often do you... His, his, look, this is what women don't understand. Their goal is to, bring, to keep the chaos out of the home to protect you and the children. If there's people after y'all, they want to take your house, they want to take your car, they want to put you in debt, they want to destroy your life... The system is completely against you. And a man knows it because he got to constantly deal with it every day, even before marriage. So once he get married and his love is to show her, look, all this crap that's going on out here, I'm going to protect you from it. I'm going to keep you in the home, keep you with the kids. You protect the kids. The home is protected. I'm going to go out there and make sure that happens. I built my life to make sure that happens, to keep you satisfied and keep you happy. Now, can I continuously keep you happy? That's unrealistic. I can't. I can't keep, you know, there's some of that happiness have to come from you. Now, if you're a religious person, a Christian, then that's from God, most definitely. But if you're just a regular person, ain't nobody going to keep you happy. It's just not going to happen. Nobody can keep you completely happy. You might get some happiness from another person, but not all your happiness. And he can't constantly be there worrying about you constantly not being happy. And that's another modern day women problem. A man got to go out there and make a living to take care of you, to make sure you have a good life. And yet you want him to sit there constantly thinking about you 24 hours a day. Or is she happy today or not? Because you can't make a woman happy all the time. It's impossible. She's asking for too much. You need me to check in on you. Well, if I'm your woman, every day. Every day. Yeah. Yeah, in the morning before morning and night. Yeah. Call you in the morning, call you at night. It's not a problem. But do you not see what, where I'm... Now, he's been very nice. He know that's an issue. That's controlling. Women love to use that word controlling, and that's controlling. Constantly calling her. She knows there's a bunch of women out there that look just like her. A lot of these women are going after her man, and she has an issue with that. It's very difficult for her to accept that her man, a beautiful woman like her, a man will step out on her. It kills her ego. It makes her feel like a fool. And that's the last thing a woman wants to feel like a fool. Especially when they're beautiful and arrogant like this. Now, I'm sure she's probably a nice person. She probably treats people well. I love the way she goes back and forth with them. She, she keeps in her feminine frame. I love that. She don't get raunchy or nasty or mean. Start really throwing serious insults at them. 
she just tried to protect her side. And I really like that about her. But what her problem is, is vanity. She believes that her looks and everything about her should keep him in line. He should constantly call her, check up on her 25 hours a day like she's a child. Like she can't keep things up on her own. No, he's out there to make that money. He out there to figure the world out, to make sure that world don't destroy their world. And all she wanted to do, because she's so self-centered, want him to constantly focus in on her. And that's too much to ask, especially if you want a successful man. I'm getting it. If I was raising your children and you're not there, is that fair? How often do you want me to be there? No, but that's what I'm asking you. It's like, ideally, a good balance. A man needs to be very present in his kid's life. At a certain age, from like ages zero to five, the dad doesn't really need to be around. You're going to emasculate me if I'm there all the time and I'm changing diapers and the baby's crying and then you're upset and you're emotional and I'm in that house environment with all this, fe all these toys and you're like really big and bloated. I'm gonna be emasculated in that time. I don't need to be around from zero to five that much. I'll show up. Now I gotta make a, I have to say this. She's a modern woman. Her argument is he needs to be around the children because it's a necessary thing that both of them are around all the time. Now, if she was a, a traditional woman, I would probably understand maybe that argument, but she's not traditional. She's a modern woman. And modern women have argued that they don't need no man. They, and I'm not talking, let's talk about like single mothers, for example, right? And I'm not talking about women that end up single mothers. I'm talking about these feminists that say it's good for a woman to have a child without a man. That's a good thing. They support that. So their argument is a woman can have a child and they don't need a man. That's the argument. And yet in a marriage, all of a sudden now he's important. Now she's saying he got to be around his kids all the time because that's, that's something that's very important. Now, she's talking about both sides of her neck here. Because as soon as you ask her something like, well, can a woman have... Now, if the conversation started with her and you say, can a woman have a child and she don't really need a man, she'll agree with that. A woman can raise a child on her own. She's powerful. She's self-sustaining. She's independent. She don't need no man. She don't need no man. She can do it all on her own. But as soon as she get married to the man she wants, all of a sudden he got to be there 24 hours a day. Because the kid's going to suffer. The kid's going to suffer over this. So that's why you need to be constantly there, calling me twice a day. It's control, man. She wants to control a successful man. Because she knows at any moment he can step out on her. No matter how good looking she is. And something probably happened in her life that made her so insecure about this particular situation. And I know this sounds like arguments women use because women love to say, call a man insecure. But something happened in her that she probably lost a very successful man because he stepped down on her. Guys probably, even though as beautiful as she is, they probably stepped down on her once or twice. Maybe nothing serious, but soon she found out she probably broke it off. And now she's regretting that and she don't know what else to do. How can I have a successful man at the same time control him? Because instead of women improving themselves or accepting reality, they try to figure out ways to control that man. That seemed to be the thing modern women love to do. Oh. But you do. What do I need to do? Do you want me to change diapers? Yes. Why? Because it's your child. It's yours too. Yeah, but so I'm not, I'm not saying I'm- Who do you think is better than, at changing a diaper, me or you? 100% it is a woman. Like naturally- So not. why do you want me to be doing it if you're better? Because it's like, it's like take the slack, we're raising a child, we're raising children together, it's supposed to be a unit. If the core value of a traditional household is men and women together, so we're raising children it's together. Who's paying for the house? Just shop for your kids. <laughs> That's it. Stand up. So I will go out and get the money to provide for the home and provide for yeah, you. But you. No, but it, regardless, whether you're providing for me, this now is about the children that we're raising together. If a man's not in a child's life, or especially, for example, a female, women tend to be more hypersexual if their father isn't present in the life. Now it's important. See, I told you, man, modern women love to change it up to fit their narrative. If you, Like I said, if you ask her the basic question, can women raise a, a child without a man and be successful at it, she'll say yes in a different context. But now it's all of a sudden, now he's important. He has to be around or she can't do it. And he's saying, yeah, you can because you support single mothers. 
And you know she does because she taught modern. She not going to You put her on a woman's show and they talk about empowerment. She going to be saying, yeah, a, a woman can raise a kid without a man. She'll be saying that through the whole show if they asked her. But now it's all of a sudden she helpless. She can't raise a kid on her own. They need a father. Women can be hypersexualized if they don't have a father in their life, which I agree with that argument. It's just coming out the wrong mouth. If you're the traditional woman, then I'll I, I be, I, I be sympathetic. But you're not, a, you're not a traditional woman. You're an independent, modern woman. Because everything coming out your mouth sounds like victim. Beautiful woman. I'm not saying anything about her badly. She's a beautiful woman. I, I, I would like to see her happy. I would like to see her. She's beautiful. She's clean. She, she's proper. She's not like masculine in certain ways. But unfortunately, she drank the Kool-Aid. And that's going to keep her from getting the kind of life she wants. A good life. And it's unfortunate for a beautiful woman like that. Does that not change anything? Would that not make you want to, as a man, be a father and step up and be in that family unit? Of course I will be there. But from zero to five, I don't need to be there all the time. I don't even think I should live at the home. No, no, now you took it too far. <laughs> yeah, man, he's trolling, man. He, he, him and Destiny love to do that. They love to argue. Now, look at look at Sneaker. He, he's a relatively good-looking guy, right? He don't need to push back at women or make all these points. He can just play dumb. And just agree with everything she's saying, and then most likely he can get it. He has a really good chance of getting it. All he had to do is say all the proper things that she want to hear, and he could get it. He don't have to do it. But that, that talks about his character. Even though he knows he can play these roles and pretend like he's a feminist and all these things, he won't do it. He believes in the truth. Do I agree with everything come out sneak on mouth? No. But at least in his mind, he believes he's telling the truth and he's seeking the truth. Hopefully, God willing, he'll find it. But right now, that's what he's seeking. And even if there's a beautiful woman in front of him, he could lie to and pretend like he don't care. And he could just whisper sweet nothing, nothings in her ear. He chooses not to. He chooses to pretty much show who he really is and how he really thinks. And despite it all, she's attracted to him. If he really wanted that, and if she was single, and he really wanted that, I believe. I might be wrong. Y'all can leave it in the comments if I'm wrong. I believe he can make it happen. And I believe in his mind he could make it happen. But like I said, he's always working, like he said. He's always working. So he's going to continue saying the things he's going to say. He's going to push back. And despite it all, she finds that attractive. I need an apartment somewhere. I don't want to smell the poop and the diapers. You actually, no, I don't want to trip over a toy while I'm walking to the bathroom. You're deluded, mate. So you wouldn't have, you wouldn't be ready for kids then. If you do, if you wouldn't want to be there and see all these beautiful moments, like a vital moment of watching your child smile for the first time, watching your child take a first step, that's something you've created. And I feel like as a man, that should be the most powerful thing that you've done. You've created a life. You know, that, that's your name. That's one thing you've got. You raise a child, you have them in your name, your family name, especially if you have a son, and you don't want to be there and watch their first moments. I want to be I there. I think that's poor. But you can record it. No. No, I'll be there. I'll be there <laughs> two days out of the week, but like every single day, just babies crying, and it's, it's, I am going to lose what makes me able to provide for the house and for you and for the kids. We're not going to both breastfeed this baby at the same time. You know deep down it needs to be every day. Like, why wouldn't it be every day? We could compromise. No, it's not compromise. It would be you need to be in the house every day. You See, that's, that's control right there. See, what it is is she walks down the street or she sees some kind of TV show where she sees two couples are walking. One's a female, one's a dude. He has a kid on his shoulder. They're playing around. It's probably a Saturday or Sunday or something like that. And she thinking, like, he's with that kid all the time and with that woman all the time, they happy or whatever. But the truth is, he works all week long. He's too tired. He can't play with the kids. That's reality. He got to deal with the bosses. He got to, you know, he's losing money or some kind of stuff that's happening that he probably not talking about with that woman. So out of guilt and out of desire, he wants to try to make up for it on the weekend. So he takes them to the park, got the kid on his shoulder, he kisses his wife, they hold hands while they walk, and they talk about things they don't have a chance to talk about during the week because he's too tired. 
And then a woman like this will see that. And she have these dreams in her head thinking that he's doing all these things. That he's being like fantastic. That he like going to be home every day. Calling her three, four times a day. She, they put these fantasies in their head thinking that's the situation, but it's not. They don't know these, these people's lives. They don't understand. The woman probably understanding in this particular situation. She knows her man is out there slaying it, trying to give them the best life he can. So she's going to be patient. And for her reward, he, she's spending time with him on the weekends. Until they get to the point where the kids are out of the house and then they can enjoy retirement, go travel and do whatever they want to do. She understands there's a reward in the end. So she's willing to be patient during the hard years. But she don't want to wait for the hard years when she gets older. She wants to enjoy life while she's still beautiful. While she's still young. That's the issue. She don't want to wait. And most modern women don't want to wait. They want to have it all now. That's usually the problem. You in the house with your women raising your children together. Because I'm not being funny, there's enough men on the world that aren't present in their kids' life, and I think it's an absolute shit show, if I'm honest with you. Look at all the single women, look at all the single mothers. You well, know, I'm not saying I, you're going to be no, single. No, but, but that's how it is. What, what's the point? There is no benefit. Listen, like, as single women, as single mothers, they deal with a lot of slack, you know, and they deal with it, they raise the kids, and it's like, there is no difference to a woman that is in a relationship or a marriage. They deal with the slack because they got to work. They make, she making it sound like they just stressing out because they single mothers. No, they stressing out because not only they single mothers, but they also got to go out there and do that nine to five. They got to deal with bosses. They got to deal with all this crap out there in the world because they have no man to deal with it for them. In a lot of the cases, these women put themselves in that situation, having these kids on their own. It's not all cases. Now, if it was a woman that was married, let's just say a woman was married to a military dude. And she had a son. And then he went to Afghanistan and got killed. Now she's a widow. Now she's on her own. A woman like that, you can feel sorry for. She didn't want that situation. She didn't want a divorce. She wanted to stay in her marriage. And it's unfortunately, her husband was killed in the process. That woman, I can see what you're talking about. But a woman that leaves her man or she dates a guy she knows can't support her. Or don't even want to support her. And she has a baby by that man. She put herself in that situation. A woman that walks on in a marriage because she's bored. She put herself in that situation. Now you're supposed to feel sorry for her. Because now she not only got to take care of the kids. But also now she got to make a living. If that guy don't pay her enough child support. She got to go out there and make it on her own. And they stressed out. Now I get it. She feels sorry for those women. But she making it seem like. Look if she had a, if she had a man. That made a lot of money. She's not going through all that. She probably get assistance with raising the kids. She probably don't have to clean because she got a maid. She going on all these trips. Never have to worry about food. Happy as can be. She can sit around and complain all day long. Because he ain't calling her enough. Or he ain't home enough. Because he out there slaying it trying to get that money. For her to have the lifestyle she wants, she's just not satisfied. She's bored. Let me get a divorce. Let me destroy the family. Let me go ahead and do that. Take the kids. Go through all these court proceedings, make it miserable for both of us, rip that man to shreds, even though he was out there trying to make a living for both of us because I was dissatisfied and I wanted to destroy the family. What did Kevin Sam used to call their home wreckers? She will wreck the home because I'm not happy. That's what it is. Raising her children if she's by herself, if her husband's living in a separate apartment. She's basically a single mother. Three days out of the week. Honestly, <laughs> why am I like this? It's more impactful if the dad shows up and gets to be his best self when he's there. Yeah, he's there. I always look forward to my father coming home. All of us did. I remember when we was young that as soon as my father walked through the door, we would jump. He would just pick us up and hug us and put us down. We loved that. It was a routine. I can't remember when that stopped, man, but we really liked it, though. We really looked forward to him being there. We saw our mother all day long or whatever. I mean, I wasn't alive long enough to know my mother the way I should have. I wish I did, but from my understanding, that was the, the arrangement. Our mother spent more time with us 
And when our father got home, we always looked forward to him because he was the stoic man. He was the man that you looked up to, that you're like, ooh, this man coming through through the door now. Let me go ahead and impress him. You know, that relationship was amazing. Can you imagine him being there all the time? We probably treat him like the mother with very little respect because children tend to do that, I have to admit. They be around their mother constantly. Once they get old enough, all of a sudden they can be disrespectful. She got to deal with their little tantrums and all these other things that's going on, constantly telling them to clean up their room. Yeah, she don't want to deal with that kind of stuff. She wants to be able to turn around and get him to deal with it. But the fact that he's not there all the time is the reason why they will respect him more. If he's there constantly with her, it'll just be a constant fight with all of them then. He has to, you can't use the term, wait till your father get home, because that works. Because you don't know the man like you know your mother. You don't know what he's going to do. You already learned what what pisses your mother off, what your mother will let you get away with because you're constantly with her and you learn her. The father's not there. So you don't know how he's going to react to your bad behavior. So you're going to be more cautious with him because you don't know what he's going to do. Because he would walk in the door and tear your butt up. And that's what my father did. If he found out you was acting badly, and he got home, he would tear you up. And you was afraid of him. You had a healthy fear of your father. It wasn't that you thought he hated you. You just knew that if you had it badly, he was going to tear your tail up. And I think that's a great dynamic between a man and a woman and their children. But in, in her case, she wanted them there constantly to take the burden off of her. Ain't about the kids. Sorry, my phone. It ain't about the kids. It's about taking the burden off of her. It, it, it's bad enough you got to go out there and bust your tail and be exhausted. But she wants you to come home and be exhausted too. So you can take the burden off of her. <laughs> Look at her ass, man. Looking a little crazy right there. But I'm just saying. He's there. You're saying it. These are your own words. When he's there. So what is the point? You're in the club. You're in business. You're doing that. And and I don't say anything it. about As the club. As a business provider, I get that. Be the provider. I'm be the saying from ages zero to five, being there every day is detrimental. At the Google Gaga stage, I don't need to be there all the time. It's just that that's the truth. There's no reason for me to be there other than for her to make it fair. If I'm living with my girlfriend all the time, we're gonna end up hating each other. That's where the resentment actually builds. If we have separate apartments and then we get to miss each other and then we get to actually be our best selves when we show up and see each other, you went, that relationship lasts longer because you get to miss each other. That's a very important part of maintaining a relationship. It's about unity, it's about raising them. It's a, that, that's all it is, I don't even need to argue anymore. That's what it's about. What are your red flags? Red flags at a woman if she doesn't respect her father. That's number one. Number two, if she has a high body count. I think if it surpasses half of her age, actually just over five. Sneeko, have you ever been in love? I have, yeah. yeah. Many times. Many times? Many times. How are those experiences for you? That was a very therapeutic question, but they were good. I think it's a, it's a good learning experience. The difference between a man and a woman falling in love is you notice when a woman falls in love and it doesn't work, it ends up kind of wearing down her soul. Trauma as a man can help build you and make you stronger and help you navigate the world better because in my experience, I learn from actual experience. I have to go through it in order to really understand not to do something. I think a lot of men are like that. But whereas a woman, if she goes through a traumatic experience, if she goes through a terrible relationship, if she has her heart broken, then that changes her view and makes her more cynical going into the next relationship. Really? Yes, that is the truth. I mess with many women. And I think in every situation on the get to know her stage, they complain about their exes, man. They complained about the exes, usually the recent one, but they got a long list of bad situations. It all starts out good, of course, but she don't talk about that part. She talks about all the crap they did to her. But you got to take it by her word because you can't hear his side of the story because you know there was something about her that going through all these dudes. And that's another thing when it comes down to body count. Why couldn't you like get these one of these guys to lock you down? What's the problem? And why did all of them end badly? Is this something I have to watch out for? And it does affect men in different ways. Men go through a lot of trauma, but we built for that. When you join the military, you get cursed out. Well, at least back in the day, you got cursed out. When you're on jobs, you get cursed out. I remember I was doing this job. Man, I almost got cursed out all the time until I learned the skill I needed to learn.
Did I stick with that job? No, I went to some other job. But either way, men got to go through all this drama, trauma. You don't. They think we just going through these jobs and we just having a good time. It's not just a physical thing, but you go through a lot of mental stuff when you go to these jobs. They either cursing you out, insulting you, making you do things you don't want to do, or more than what you should be doing on the job and getting paid not a lot of money. And this is the stuff you got to deal with. And then, because you're not getting paid the kind of money that you want, at least at that time, you got to get a second job. And now she's even more upset because you're never home. Because you're out there trying to make the money. So it's, it's like you can't please her. Because if you didn't make enough money, she'll be pissed about that. They don't understand what we go through. But as soon as they go through some tra- trauma, and it's usually love related. It ain't jobs. It's usually love related drama, tra- uh, trauma that they go through. And it affects them. Because they're very cynical, they can be very sneaky, they can lie, they can cheat, they can do all kinds of stuff because the way they were treated in the past. And that's their excuse, and they use it as an excuse. The reason why I did this is because this man treated me this way. The reason why I'm very cynical is because I tried to have a relationship and this man cheated on me. There's always a line of stuff about the man that they were with in the past. Our trauma is usually stuff outside of relationships. We do have relationship issues where we like to self-correct. And that's another thing, do we do self-correct. Women don't self-correct. We do. When we find something wrong, even when there's something wrong with the woman, we still self-correct saying to ourselves, now I've learned not to mess with this type of woman anymore. That's self-correction. We could go by feelings and desires and still mess with that same kind of woman. But then we got to correct ourselves and say, this is not, you know, fruitful for me to deal with this type of woman anymore. I need to correct and do something else. Women, on the other hand, they won't do that. They'll keep doing the same thing over and over and over again and blame it on the man. They can have 10 relationships. In every relationship, she did nothing wrong. Women have a serious issue about self-correcting. They, If you ask them to rank themselves, they say they're 10s. They don't feel like they need to improve on anything because they're perfect the way they are. So why do they need to self-correct? Men don't answer like that. We all say we are 5 or something like that because it's not a big deal to us. We can be unattractive, but as long as we're able to go out there and make money, we know we got a chance. Women, on the other hand, no, sir, they would not do it. I think it's their way around. I think when men are in love and they go through heartbreak, I feel like they actually don't come back from it. What makes you say that? From experiences, from conversations from people, from, from the way men are. Guys that are heartbroken, they're in the gym right now. They're starting a business right now. They're trying to improve. They don't want to ever let a woman control their ego like that again. That's what I mean, like men shut off like from love. So if you have your heart broken, then it's like they do go militant and it does probably make them become a better man, but then then- Because dealing with a woman takes you from your course. If you, let's just say you're trying to be a millionaire, maybe even a billionaire, dealing with that can sidetrack you. You need to concentrate on what you're doing and when you mess with a woman, and she's dragging you down. And after you get rid of her, you got to program yourself not to deal with a woman like that no more. It might like it might seem like he's shutting down with her because he recognized the traits that he had to deal with before. So he shuts down. He'd probably be more open with her if she don't show those traits. A man has to concentrate on building himself, building relationships. The last thing he needs is a woman to drag him down while he's doing it. So they're very careful when they're dealing with the next woman. That's part of the self-correcting thing. They're not open to love, and then they do this whole, they don't want to then be loyal to just one woman. They want their options. That is kind of true for, for me. My first relation, like in high school, I was all romantic, lovey-dovey, simping, giving her flowers, writing her phones. It's not simping, though. It is simping. I think being romantic is not simping. That doesn't make you a simp. Okay, I, I got a theory about that. I, I I made this theory before, I believe, right? Giving a woman flowers, right? Now, it seemed all nice, and the women like it. 
But the kind of man she wants, the only time she'll get flowers from him is when he screws up. And let's just say that he has a wife and she's messed with him. He'll give her flowers. Let's just say he had an affair. She finds out. He'll give her flowers. Let's say he forgets her birthday. She's angry. He gives her flowers. Notice the pattern there. Rich dudes, guys of means, high value men, don't give out flowers unless they screwed up something. Or they're trying to make up for some kind of wrongdoing. But you get an average dude on a first date and he comes to bring her flowers. One, she haven't earned it. And two, she like, well, what did you do wrong to give me flowers? Just out of the blue. It ain't Mother's Day or nothing like that. So why are you handing me flowers for? They say it's romantic, but women don't want gifts unless they feel like they earn it. If you want, they respect. Rich men, like, they got to get something out of the situation before they're giving out gifts. If you good, you're a good girl and you being my side chick, I'll give you a gift. That's the reward. If you know I'm, like, pumping and dumping other women while I'm seeing you and I give you flowers, that's a gift. Because you was a good girl and you accepted what I was doing. You just don't give her flowers. You, you, you see what I'm saying, right? If you disagree with me in the comments, please, please say something about it. I would love to hear what you have to say because I love this community thing. I really like to hear what y'all think about this. You don't reward women unless somehow they earned it. And, and for them to have respect for you, they have to earn it first. You go pick her up. You either honk the horn or you go to the door and grab her. Take her out. You're already taking her to dinner because you're doing a polite thing. You know, if you picked up a friend, you probably do that for your friend too. Especially if you invited them. Even buying them a drink, that's nice. That's courteous thing. It falls into the courteous category. But when you start giving her gifts and she didn't earn it, that's when it becomes a problem and that's when she starts to lose respect for you. It's almost like you're trying to buy her. And that can become a problem. Like, why, why, why should it be called simping? If you're showing love and affection to someone you love, that's not simping. Like, you're not doing too much. But so showing... respect and love and attention has to be earned from a woman. You can't just give it to her thinking that the more I love her, the more she's going to love me. It has yeah. to be recipro reciprocated. I think this goes for a lot of guys. It's not heartbreak, it's just understanding female nature. If I'm writing all these poems and giving her all these flowers, and there's another guy out there who's not giving her attention and is maybe more accomplished or... She, she wants attention from that guy because of what he is. If I'm giving you all the attention from the jump, then you have nothing to work for. Women want to work for attention just as much as men do. So me writing all these poems and love cards and everything, it kind of, it's a turn off if she doesn't have to get something at the same, if she doesn't have to work for it. You know, so some women just want love. You know, it's not always about working for it. And I put myself in that. And those are the men they don't respect. Those are the men that are members of OnlyFans. Or, or they're going to shows with adult actresses. They call it fans. And to me, they're, they're worse than simps. A lot of women adult actresses, they marry these guys. A lot of people like to call them simps. Me, I call them fans. They are worse. They see you on the screen, they fall in love with you, and then they meet you. If I met her, and I start simping, as they call it for her, I'm a fan. I've seen her on grilling. I want to be with her. I really haven't accomplished anything, and I just want to do it. And she marries me. She just married a fan. That's what it is. And that's why they're never satisfied with that. They are never satisfied. Situation, like, I've never been the kind of woman to want the man that doesn't want me. You know, I want stability. Yeah, yeah you are. No, I'm not. You don't even know me, so yes, I would. You know, I'm the woman that wants stability. I'm the woman that wants love. Maybe I'm naive and maybe it is a fairy tale, but that's the way that I see the world. Show me that you want me, fight for me. The moment I know you've got my respect in the sense of I will ride for you, I will root for you, I will fight for you. But if you're not even showing me that you care, why? Why, why should I? The relationship that you're describing, you're going to get bored of this guy. You want a guy to be with you all the time. You don't have a lot of expectations. You just want a man that loves you. And if you're not having to compete for his attention to some extent, if you're getting all of his attention and he's always available, 
both of you are going to get bored, and then you're going to end up cheating. You're going to leave. When I say competing for your attention, I don't, I don't mind competing if it's your work, your business. I'm not competing with another woman for you. So if your time is not with me, then have it be at work, but it's not going to be for another woman. I'm not competing over Not her. one other. Women love to be jealous. Women love to be jealous. That's their thing. You know, women, that's why they love all these movies where the women are jealous and going through all this drama. They love that stuff. These bored housewives, they really get into these novels and movies, everything that these women going through all these heartaches and pain and crying. That's why they love to cry at movies. They love it. You would you would associate crying with pain and suffering, but with women, it's almost like a pleasure for them to do it. They love this kind of stuff. They they think it's amazing when they can see something that's just gonna make them ball, man. They just love this kind of stuff. She don't want some boring dude that that don't give her any type of drama in her life to make her. I was watching this movie called Parenthood with Steve Martin, I believe. And the grandmother on the show was talking about she was with this man like a roller coaster. You know, she was going through all these emotions, but she loved it. She loved it. Women love when a man can do that to her. It might be in a lot of cases bad for her health. But they love it. They can't help it, man. They're like a moth to a flame when it comes down to that kind of stuff. They meet some dude. He's a jerk at the beginning. That's why you see a lot of these romantic movies when a lot of these guys are jerks at the beginning. And these women hate him at the beginning, but then there's something about him that's attractive versus the nice guy. I was watching this movie called Made. It was like it was like a series for Netflix. And she had this guy that was like abusive, and but she had a, a son by him. I mean, she still loved him, but she ran away from him like two, three times. But then she met this other dude, good looking guy, very healthy, very nice. She found that boring and she wasn't attracted to him. So she ended up sleeping again with the guy that was abusing her. You know, it's, they keep going back to this thing and it's crazy. So she would never be happy with that. Some dude doing everything she expect him to do. And he's right about that. He knows the deal. Deep down, she knows it too. She loved conflict. She loved that static in between them. She loved that. That make her heart beat right there. Make her blood pressure go up. Get her excited. Make the hair stand up on the back of her neck. Make her sweat. They love that, that stuff. She's sitting across some dude that's boring predictable. I'm a feminist. I just want to have a bunch of baby with you and raise them and we be home together all the time, see each other. I'm remote, so I don't have to be nowhere else but with you all the time. It'll drive her nuts. It'll get to the point where she's going to want a career and get away from him. Now, I was watching something with Steph Curry. I saw a little video talking about his wife and I wanted to do, I wanted to do some kind of little video on that maybe. But in all the situation was she has a husband that adores her, works hard for her and the family, and she got bored. And she wanted the same attention. You know, everybody knows about it. She wanted the same attention that Steph Curry is getting. Because he seemed like a nice guy. He seemed like somebody you should be happy with. But obviously she wasn't happy. She won't so much she was so much dissatisfied that she went on a red talk table with Jada Pickett Smith to complain about it. I think she's regretting it now. But that just shows you right there, man. They don't want no, they don't want a nice guy. They want that conflict. But they also want the movie ending, too. They want to go through all the drama, all the heartache. But in the end, he realizes that she's the prize. And he come back on hand and knee begging for her to come back. But in most cases, when these women destroy their relationships, the guy never comes back. He just moves on. And that's what makes them furious. Well, this is the end of the video. I'm done. I appreciate all of you coming by. Thanks again for patience. And I'm sorry for the video that I put out the first time. I didn't realize there was something wrong with it. Somebody in the comment section was like, what the freak going on with that video? I thought he was just being funny. But the truth is there was something wrong with that video. So... Thank you again for the patience. I, I just wanted to go through this trouble. I hate putting out a product. 
and it doesn't work well. So I tried to do it again. Hopefully I did it better the second time around. Okay. I really appreciate all of you coming by. Thanks again and peace.